We are here with uh, John Delaporte, one of the co-founders of LP4Y. And uh, John is in front of a picture, symbolic picture called Hope. And uh, John is giving hope to a lot of youngsters of the undecent world. Can you tell us more about it? Yeah, super, super kind uh, picture. Uh, it's a nice job. And hope is definitely what can change the world. Uh, finally, what we did 13 years ago, that's the, to create an organization um, being able to welcome youth around the world, uh, youth in danger, youth coming from the undecent world, uh, youth coming from the very poverty, and to welcome them, uh, 18 or 17 to 24 years old, uh, and to accompany them until they reach the decent world. That's what is very interesting is your background, because you're coming from a completely different world. Can you tell us a little bit about your life before LP4Y? Yeah, uh, I was an entrepreneur. I started my first company when I was uh, 19 years old. And I was not able to, uh, to, to study. Uh, at this time, my, my father died, and I decided to create my company, and finally that's what, uh, you know, drive me uh, since uh, 40 plus years. Um, first life was uh, with company as consultants. Uh, uh, we were consultant uh, for marketing, uh, uh, you know, um, deals between companies. And finally, uh, 13 years ago, after a World Tour, backpack with our children, we decided to that foundation called Life Project for Youth. But your first life was very useful to build up the expertise, then to, to give it to the youngsters of the undecent world, right? Yeah, finally, maybe the nothing is by hazard in the life. And I think I was, you know, drive, drove from my early, uh, you know, uh, adult life to now just to be prepared to be able to work with the youth now in danger. And I think this is uh, the meaning of life. Youth in danger. You talk about uh, indecent world. Uh, in French it's even uh, stronger, le monde indécent. Uh, can you tell us more about this? Yeah. Uh, imagine that now there, is, there are 700 million of youth living in the indecent world, meaning the use excluded of the decent world. Decent world is when you have uh, what you need, when you are free to decide and you are free to have home, to have health, education, and uh, to, to have a work. The undecent world, this is the world where the, the people are outside of the system, and even if they work uh, 12 hours a day or 15 uh, hours a day, to survive and they cannot really afford or get what, what they need to be free. So what is your view of the globalized world and what is your mission with this LP for why? Yeah. Since, uh, I don't know, 30 years, 40 years, we, are, we speak about the uh, sustainable world, ecological world, the planet must be saved and to save it, I think there is only one thing to do, just to balance that world. From now on, the world is unbalanced as the nature is unbalanced by, you know, the bad decision of the, the, the civilizations. Uh, today, what to do? I think one of the most important thing is really to balance the, the chance for everybody to be able to join the society, to join the communities and to be part of the, that uh, new world that we have to create. Uh, one thing that really struck me when we talked yesterday is that you are almost all the time on the field and it's very important to be on the field. Can you tell us why? Well, this is, this is really a second life. We decided to, to stay close uh, to the poor use in order to understand what they have to say, to understand what they have to bring to our lives, to bring to this new world that we have to create. And after 13 years, I'm still not 
you know, fulfilled by what they have to say. They still uh, teach me a lot of things every day. And most of your life you're in Asia, right? Yeah. What is the territory you're, yeah. you're kind of working on? 13 years ago, we created a before in the Philippines, then finally in Vietnam, then Indonesia, then we came after five years in the Philippines, in uh, India, then Nepal, Myanmar, Bangladesh, now Sri Lanka, and Lebanon, and uh, close to Egypt. Egypt uh, so you're close to them and you're living with them? Yeah, 11 months uh, a year. I, I try to learn from them uh, by living as all the catalysts, all the LP4Y staffs. Uh, we, we live in the slums, in the centers where uh, the youth are. And what, are, what, what do you think is the strongest achievement? Yesterday you told me a story which was fascinating about this girl who wanted to become a lawyer. Can you tell us about this story, this person? Yeah. Trisha was a, a girl from a village, from a very poor background. Uh, her father, mother uh, are not able to read and write. And she came by chance uh, in and before why. She was approached by one of the catalysts and she decided to join. And during one internship of two weeks, the law firm, she said, my dream is to become a lawyer. And we said, okay, uh, that's a good idea, good dream, but maybe it's not super possible. And she said, yes, but let's see. And I was there in Myanmar uh, just uh, two weeks ago, and I met her, and I said, uh, in the Stars Club, which is the alumni club, and I said, I told her, oh, what, what, what are the news, what, what do you do now? And she, she said, I'm working in the law firm and I do research for the lawyers. And I, I am one of the people that really count in the, in the firm now. That's a beautiful story. I mean, yeah, fulfilling dreams of, of youngsters. Fantastic, but what we have to understand is it's not at all, uh, you know, uh, just exception. One use out of uh, 100 or no. In each use, you can find this extraordinary uh, kind of, uh, you know, pass. As if they, they were poor just to become better than us, maybe. If ever we give them the chance to, to, be, to be part of this life. That's a beautiful message. Now, let's come to the art. I mean, there was an art exhibition. Uh, I think for fundraising purposes. So, what is the role of art in building the future? I mean, together with art, to, together we art is the uh, is the event. So, what is the, the link, the connection? Um, in the Buddhist and Hindu world, we say that if you want to understand someone, something or someone, you have to look at it by seven different perspectives minimum, and seven, as you know, this is the number for, you know, the, the big number. And seven perspective, finally, in our mindset of occidental persons, it's super complicated. We, we have this point of view, but the different perspective, it's much more complicated. And I think that our heart is probably one of the most beautiful, uh, you know, tool or way to study the different perspectives when you are in front of a, a piece of work or artwork, you say, oh, what, what, what are the different messages I received from that, that piece? And that amazed us. And I think this, we are able to develop that kind of different perspective, probably will be able to open up our world to everybody on the world. It's interesting when you said art and heart. <laughs> so, I mean, the, the link is very clear. Yeah. So, uh, this is the last question. Do you want to leave a message to the people who will uh, view this video? I think life is super generous. I, I live with uh, very poor youth since, uh, since uh, 13 years. But finally, it's not sad. It's not sad. It's sad if we do nothing. But if we open our world, to that, if we open our hands to 
the message of the universe probably will receive this chance to be joyful because of the understanding of the needs of the planet which is balance um, between everybody. We are all human, all at the same level and art can be something that gave us, give us the, the sense. Thank so you. put art in your life. Thank you very much, John. Thank you.